Good afternoon, John Donovan. Hey, Marty Keller. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good. Yeah. Here we are just before Thanksgiving, and uh, I'm grateful yeah. for our opportunity to uh, get together and share our experiences and insights about the accountability practice. And for those of you who are joining us, maybe for the first time, this is the Intentional Living Podcast. John Donovan is uh, my mentor. He's the gentleman who put together this accountability practice in the intentional living environment. And it's all here to help us deal with behaviors that feel compulsive. Like when we have uh, something that we feel compelled to do and we don't know why, and, it, and even our minds might be going, don't do that. Um, and we do it anyway. It's like, you know, you ever come up to a, a, a traffic light and it's already turned yellow and you got a party you goes, floor it. And, you're, and your logical mind goes, what are you talking about? Uh, and you floor yeah. it anyway. You run the red light. So uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a normal human experience for all of us. And there are keys to appreciating and understanding and unlocking where the com col bah, excuse me, compulsivity lies to right. make it conscious because it's living in our subconscious make it conscious. And in that awareness, as we'll talk about in the podcast today, um, we have the opportunity to create something entirely different from that compulsive uh, behavior that many of us uh, get really frustrated with. And yet we do it over and over and over again and, and feel quite uh, helpless, out of control. So that's what the Intentional Living podcast is. Um, last week, we had a fascinating conversation about the role of emotion, and John, you spent some you spent some good time helping us understand the 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 way emotion works in our bodies and in our experience in our daily experience and in uh, in um, relationship to what's in our subconscious, what's relation in relationship to our hidden memories, uh, unhealed childhood trauma, and other experiences that. Um, our intentional living process is designed to um, uh, make conscious for us. So what I'd like to do today to follow up on, on that really great conversation, and if you didn't get a chance to see it, my friends, I, I, I think if you go back and listen to that one, that'll really help you appreciate today's conversation. So uh, please, please check it out um, from last week. But uh, what I'd like to talk about today is why Getting into our emotional experience in the recovery process is so central to making a making a different life experience happen. Yeah. Um, in my childhood trauma, my coping skill was to go to um, either fight, flight, freeze please, which is an adrenaline state of uh, avoiding danger, usually a um, peril or something that is life-threatening. And to a infant, toddler, being ostracized or left alone is life-threatening. So we, we get into these reaction modes based on not having a guide to help us uh, uh, maneuver through, navigate, navigate our emotional, what's happening to us. With, with my grandson, if, um, he, he's reactive. He's, he'll say what's going on. Um, and how old is he when? Uh, right now he's nine. And some of the instances I'm going to be talking about was when he was five, six, seven. Okay. Um, I would say, okay, we're going to go to the store, uh, put your shoes on. And he'd say, I don't want to go. And, and I'd say, well, I, I'm hearing you say you don't want to go. And then I'd say something else and he'd uh, raise his voice or um, do a, a behavior that was like um, um, impulsive. And I would just say to him, oh, I see you're frustrated or I see you're angry about going to the store. Okay, I see that, and, 
and put your shoes on, we're going to the store. I wouldn't reframe his reality. I wouldn't blame him for not being able to emotionally regulate. Um, let's go. To the so you store. wouldn't say you wouldn't say stop that, or I'll give you something no. to cry about, or right. all the yeah. all the things yeah. that we heard. Yeah. So he he would get familiar. He would have words to put to what he was experiencing in his body, which was you're interrupting me. I don't want you to interrupt me. I want to do what I'm doing. No. And okay, I see you're frustrated, or I see you're angry, so that he could come to see and then move him, move myself to the car, to the store, okay? Um, so he's gonna have connection to this emotional, reactive place where he's gonna learn to regulate that, learn to identify it as what it is, like um, I'm mad right now, and I can't express it or I don't have to express it. This is, you know, when he grows up and has this capacity to know himself or what's going on inside his body, his emotional feeling body. In, in my recovery, I grew up not knowing this, but what the trauma, childhood trauma, another way to say that is complex post-traumatic stress did was estrange me from my emotional sense, my capacity to know what I'm feeling so that I can make a choice about how to express it. Um, and I relied on, um, well, for me it was I got big and I got to be a bully and I, I would threaten people if they didn't do what I said or I would have a behavior that came out, um, rageaholic, alcoholic, workaholic. Um, and I had no idea that these conditions or these results were a direct result of unresolved childhood trauma. Okay. We talked about last time that estranged me from my emotional feeling body. We right. talked about the emotional feeling body being those sources of information that aren't tangible, that we can't access through our five senses, see, hear, taste, touch, smell. And the emotion feeling is different than the tactile sense of touch, which you can sense smooth, rough, cold, hot. For safety purposes, it's all about maintaining our well being and our comfort. Our emotional body maintains our ability to be fluid in a dynamic situation, like relationships. See, I, I grew up not knowing how to behave or act in a healthy relationship. I was either going to punch you or leave you or blame you or say, yeah, you're right. I'm no good. Um, and, and not, not even knowing that I was doing it. Um, so me reattaching to my emotional feeling body, which was so foreign to me, it's like, what do you feel? Well, you ask me what I feel. I'll tell you what I think. Um, and I got I got a lot of thoughts about what just went on and judgments and criticisms and critiques and advice and all that stuff. But I couldn't tell you how I felt. Um, and in my capacity to feel was was a, a more information about what's going on, about making a connection. My wounded child did not want to make an intimate connection, just wanted to get it right, get you off my back, have everybody happy, everybody be okay, and I'll be okay, you're okay, I'm okay. Um, instead of being in this dynamic of relationships and building bonds and trust and uh, capacity to communicate. Um, so to get familiar with that thing that I estranged myself from, which is my emotional feeling body, is where we talk about this intentional living accountability process, accountability tree process, where, let me bring the board up, where I simply own where I'm at. And, and an example of that, um, me owning where I'm at, and what I mean by, I'm gonna go to the middle of the board here. 
only where I'm at is knowing I'm in this column. Some, I'm, I'm here. Um, I talked last week about being an, an alcoholic. Well, once I said I'm an alcoholic, I was out of denial. I, I now couldn't deny that I was an alcoholic because I saw that I, I owned that I was an alcoholic. And um, in that ownership, what I found, instead of being demeaned, diminished, ridiculed, told I was stupid, was access to options about what I wanted to do with myself. Do I want to go get drunk again or do I, what do I want? I, I began to have options. And in that statement, I'm an, I'm an alcoholic, something happened in my emotional body. I said the truth of where I'm at, which happens to be in alignment with the trauma. This is a cutaway of an iceberg, my experiences, and this is, I remember everything. Nine tenths of my experiences have been relegated to my subconscious, albeit subconscious, it's still active in protecting me from harm that may come in the moment. Um, it's on guard for something that happened when I was a child. Not, not, a, not a story or an event, but a feeling tone. And one of the examples I use in this instant is I'm in a group of people. I say something and somebody raises their eyebrow or rolls their eyes. Well, my first reaction, reaction is, you're, it's about me. You're calling me stupid or you don't care or you think whatever you think you're better than me. I would go into one of these reactive modes. I'd fight, flight, freeze, or please. Um, so um, when I said I'm a German alcoholic and felt that, I felt that it was unfamiliar and I still noticed something, it's almost like a relief or something leaving. And my next thought was, I'm coming back to this group, which was the first time I ever thought I didn't want to go there. Um, so I didn't know how to talk about what happened to me then, and I do now. So what we're saying to reconnect to my emotional body is I go over here to this, what we call the accountability process or the accountability tree process and simply own where I find myself. And where I find myself, is it always in alignment with the information given to me as a child? And the information given to me as a child was, I'm not enough, I could do better, um, um, I'm stupid, there's something wrong with me, my gender is wrong, my whole, being is fucked up somehow. So that was the conception I had of myself. And the result was relieving myself of this stress. I would either do things for other people, I call that codependency, they became first, or I'd go get drunk. Or what I mean by avoiding behaviors, I'd either start screaming, yelling instead of communicating, or going to work instead of staying home and being part of a unit. So this so, is just, just want to point out then um, for the, the person who might be here for the first time, what John just said, those are the behaviors that we are working on demystifying. Right. And he's he, he's begun to lay out, first of all, where does it come from? Because it, it's not it, it doesn't come out from Mars. It's it's right. in us. And right. this is how we begin to to bring it out of our subconscious. John, I just wanted to, to uh, point that out to uh, the, yeah, new, break, the, new, break the newcomer. Yeah, break I've said this, I've been saying this for 26 years and sometimes I forget. I know. I have, I have connecting things here that I'm not talking about. So thank right. you for that. Okay. So, and, and we're speaking like about last week about this emotional feeling body thing about invisible means of information or telepathic. How do I access that? Um, how do I access something in my subconscious that I, I don't know what it is? It's 
it's a, a feeling to I didn't have the words. I didn't have, I was not talking. So I, it's just stuck in there a form of a frequency. Frequency is what we call emotion feeling. Sensing this certain frequency gives me information, awareness. Okay, so how to access, again, my emotional body. If I simply take where I'm at, wherever that is, and bring it up here into this, what we call the accountability tree, and simply say that truth, blame-free, judgment-free, without blame or judgment, how do I get to blame free, judgment free? I simply say that truth, then take a deep breath. Because when I'm breathing, I'm focused on my chest and taking in air. I'm not thinking. So, my truth, I'm an alcoholic. Let me use a different one. One of the things I found out in my results column is that I was mean. So, oh, oh my God, I don't like that. I wouldn't like to admit that, but you know what? The results are people are afraid of me. Oh, okay. They're not afraid of a nice guy. Nobody's afraid of a nice guy. They're afraid of somebody who has power to hurt them or be mean. Okay. I just said, I'm mean. Took the breath. I accessed the frequency of Whatever happened in my subconscious, emotion, feelings, stuffed feelings, stuffed emotions, to be exposed, to come up. And it was like, I, I couldn't tell you, I, I'm, I could do my best in, in three to five years explaining it. But in the experience of this feeling tone, coming from the truth, blame free judgment screen there was a soothing of relief. It was like a validation of whatever happened. Yes, that happened to you. I understand. I see you. And that's what I call emotion. It's a, a myriad of things happen in there. A constellation of things happen in there that is beyond my capacity to articulate. In that feeling tone, which is a raised in vibration, which is what our consciousness enlightenment becoming lighter, I would say what I wanted, I intend, based on that specific truth. This happens to be, I mean, take the breath, oh my God, yes, I intend to be kind. And that intent now goes at this higher level, in this feeling tone, in a way that my memory can register an experience, because all experiences are in some type of frequency, terror, anger, fear, um, fear, joy, that's a joy frequency. I, I say, I intend to be kind. It puts it in that conscious and subconscious. And today after 36 years of recovery, 26 years of doing this accountability tree process. I am manifesting from my subconscious. So I still pay attention to what's going on right now in this moment. It's not like I figured out how to be kind. Like I had no idea. I'm me. That's what I do best. I created the intent, put it in my subconscious reframed the trauma and it was like a directive to this mechanism decision making process mechanism to produce for me to be in an actual act of kindness because if you'd asked me when i discovered i mean i'm violent i'm dangerous well be kind oh Okay, how, how, do you, how do you do? I don't know how. My intent after, well, it started as soon as I said it, because me owning I'm um, mean and creating the intent to be kind to change it is an act of self kindness instead of 
oh, you're mean, you get three to five years, you get this, you got to pick up this so many things, you got to do this, you got to stay in your room for so long. No, no condition. Uh, uh, that's me, that's an act of kindness to myself in this feeling tone, no word place, goes into my subconscious and now manifests this behavior of kindness from what's in my subconscious. So even after 36 years, I still pay attention to where I find myself and where I can get, um, well, actually the information I get about how I'm still holding on to stuff. You just get me on the freeway. I'll critique drivers. I'll like, this guy's dumb. This guy doesn't care. This guy's going to be killed. Uh, I'm in my judgment. And instead of engaging in that, you know, feeding that, I go, oh, I just called that guy an asshole. I take it to the tree. Whatever I project onto somebody else is true about me. So there's still something in me that's calling me an asshole that I'm not even aware of. So I, and this is an act of faith and an act of trust. I know that's what I'm asking people to do. And just say, okay, I'm that, whatever picture I had in my mind of that particular driver, I'm that, I'm an asshole. Nice deep breath. Again, it validates something that was we missed on the other time. And then I feel that, truth of that. Ah, oh, there's still something in me that's judgmental. Okay. I intend to um, be gracious. I intend to be a defensive driver. I intend uh, to be kind. I intend to uh, heal. Again, that's a directive to go back into the subconscious and manifest it for me. Um, this, this just works. This process that's inside the brackets here is an act of self-validating. What trauma, I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know how to access. I don't have words for it. There's no, the only thing that accesses this trauma is something happening in my, in current reality, my current environment, like rolling your eyes. Oh, that triggered something. Oh my God, there I am. I want to fight you. Or, or I want to leave. Or, or I become anxious and panicked. Or I'm manifesting a behavior that I can't figure out how to stop. Correct. There it is. Thank you for that. Here so I am again. I'm doing it again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, oh, how, do, how do I... Uh, reframe that. I just don't. I'm doing it again. What is it? I'm 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 being mean again. Oh, there. Okay. I'm still. I'm mean. Nice deep breath. And whatever was triggered, we use the word triggered, but um, associated to in that subconscious now is in my awareness. That's me. It wasn't them. Uh, I'm still mean. Oh my God. Yeah. I intend to be kind. I intend to be gracious. I intend to heal. If I had a number to count how many times I've done that particular exercise, this accountability tree, Marty, it would be an astrological number. It would be a big number. Yeah. I don't even pretend. Okay. Having done that so many times, <clears throat> I find myself in enjoying my life, liking who I am, liking who I've become, uh, understanding why people say some of the things they say and not being judgmental or sarcastic or need to prove myself right, um, which gives me the capacity to listen and be part of a solution instead of contributing to the problem. A couple of, uh, uh, couple of thoughts, if I might. Because uh, we're uh, coming we're coming up against uh, the end of our time together, um, we we spent a lot of time last week really discussing the 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 power of being just with the pure energetic experiential emotional yeah expression yeah and then today what you've done is you've helped us see how that creates an opening to something entirely different. And I just want to I just want to add a couple of thoughts to that, which is the power of this vibrational 
presence that you know I, I, I I'm an asshole and it's some sense of relief or letting go or however the actual embodied experience is, this now becomes the most powerful conveyor belt of the new intention. I intend to be kind back into my subconscious. So as, in yeah. essence, what we're doing is to switch metaphors. We're reprogramming the original programming. The original programming was I'm bad. I'm, I, I, I'm worthless, whatever, whatever, was the result of those defense that through the survival mechanisms and so forth that you have there on mm -hmm. the board. Yeah. So it's like, it's the most powerful reprogramming mechanism that we can possibly apply to reframing and recreating the life that we want. So at the very bottom there of the accountability tree, that is freedom. I'm yeah. free now to create the world I want by dredging up out of my subconscious these original experiences of trauma right. and then all the stories and thoughts that I attach to those right. as a way of staying safe. And as you said earlier, to stay, to stay um, uh, outside of the near occasion of intimacy, right. to stay safe from those other people who could all, they could all be smiling at me and then they could stab me in the back. Correct. That's a little... That's a little child's belief system. Yep. So we're reprogramming that into I'm safe in this world. I enjoy being with people. I'm willing to be vulnerable. I look forward to intimacy. Those are all things that this process has allowed me to recreate in my life yes. by being, by being um, loving, no blame, no judgment, being loving to these emotional experiences that when I was a kid, I was told I couldn't be loving to, I had to, I had to suppress them. Right. So the, for me, the, the power of this process is this, that we're actually, I'm actually reprogramming my life experience. So like you said, so when I wake up in the morning, my, my primary sense is I'm happy, I'm alive. What's going to happen today? What do I want today? What, what, what do I intend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like you said, um, having done this, not nowhere near as long as you, Mr. John, but having done this for years, it's now an automatic process. It just, whenever I experience something that I, I notice is outside of the vibration of calmness, serenity, tranquility, my first thought is, okay, what's going on? What's going on inside me? What's really, what's going, what's happening? What am I believing? What am I? What am I? Pro what am I making happen? Oh, I want to. Uh, whatever it is, I, I'm. For me, almost always, John, it comes back to little Marty's feeling lonely. Right. Wow. Yeah. Little Marty's feeling out of sorts. Little Marty's. Little Marty's feeling disconnected. Okay. What do I want? Okay. I want to feel happy. I want to feel at ease. I want to feel full of joy yeah and then create that as an intention i just reprogrammed the unhappiness the loneliness into i'm okay everything feels good i'm happy yeah and then doing this over and over and over again in part because we went through years and years and years of reinforcing the original traumatic defense mechanisms yeah so that they became like you said, they're in our subconscious. We're utterly unaware of it. The <laughs> fact that somebody raises his eyebrows and you feel like putting up your dukes is like, where does that come from? Well, that's right. be that's because it's you, that's because it's been happening this way forever. And every time I don't do anything else, I just add more energy to the original way of doing things. Yeah. And so this is this is. Um, the accountability tree process that you walked us through is is how not only do we demystify our own behaviors, but we create the life that we really want to have. Yes. Yeah. Because I know this will come as a surprise to nobody. I mean, we don't get to be here forever. So the the more the sooner we discover this process, the more of our lives we can enjoy 
create the way we want it to be and bring along that wounded little child so that he or she uh, gets to be uh, just gets to be a kid again, gets yeah. to play, gets to yeah. play in a, in a safe environment that we create a psychically safe environment for that little kid who had to do it for himself or herself before. Right. Wow. Yes. So, so as uh, we come to the end of our time together, again, thank you very much for walking us through this very, very powerful process. My friends, you can see that we're both excited about this. And um, we have a number of groups every week, four, four different group meetings a week that you can participate in and uh, learn how to work this process for yourself. And uh, they're all on Zoom. And the time and days and the Zoom room addresses will all be at the uh, end of the podcast. So please feel free to check it out, come and join us, ask questions, or if you don't want to participate, you just want to listen, you can do that too. So uh, before we before we wrap up, John, any last words? Um, mm, nothing's coming to me except uh, gratitude for your friendship again. And likewise, gratitude for you and at this Thanksgiving season, it's uh, utterly appropriate. There you go. All right, well, we'll see you uh, on the other side of Thanksgiving yeah. and uh, thank you everybody for participating with us. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the uh, comments on the YouTube channel and we'll be happy to get to them. So okay. th thanks a lot. Thank you, Take Marty. Care. You uh, bet.